Hello friends. In this video, I want to take a closer look at moving sections of audio around with sync lock tracks activated in version 3.1.1 of Audacity. Yeah, you heard right. Version 3.1.1 has just been released yesterday or the day before. I've installed it. I'm using it. And so let's play around with it a little bit and see what it will do. Mike Adams here with First Person Audio. Thank you for joining me on this video. Let's take a look at the screen that I have open here. I have three tracks, two of them have audio in them, and one of them is empty, but it won't be for long. I recorded these tracks just a few minutes ago just for the purpose of this video and showing you what's happening with this video. As you know by now, and I mentioned this in a previous video, is we can grab sections of audio now and we can move them around without having to go up to the uh, toolbar and grab that time shift tool, which was really annoying. So it's a big time saver now. We can just come down into our track here and we can go into the header area and we can just move, you know, audio clips around as much as we want, get them placed where we want them. If this is something that, you know, we have different clips within a track and we want to be able to manipulate them, this is a really good way to do that. So kudos to Audacity for giving us this. This is a real time saver and it's really efficient. But what I want to do in this video is talk about moving tracks, moving uh, sections of audio clips rather. And then I want to turn on sync lock tracks here in just a moment. And I want to show you kind of how it acts with sync lock tracks on. The reason that I want to do that is because I personally use sync lock tracks all the time. Every podcast that I do, I do with sync lock tracks on because I've got different pieces of my podcast that I want to keep synced together. For example, I'll have an intro song come on and then I'll have a voiceover in that uh, while that intro is playing. I want those synced together. And so I use sync lock tracks to do that. And then you can use the label track to separate groups of sync lock tracks. Now that isn't new in 3.1. That goes, you know, way back. It's always been that way. But one of the uses for that label track is to uh, split up or separate sections of sync lock tracks. Well, when 3.1 came out, whatever it was, two weeks ago, 10 days ago, I started to wonder, okay, how does this act when you've got sync lock tracks turned on and you're trying to move some audio around? So let's get started by just doing this. If I want to select a piece of audio here, I can just click in the header and select it. Or you can drag through it and select the whole thing as well. And if I delete this in version, starting in version 3.1, again, I'm running version 3.1.1, but in version 3.1, it gave us this capability of being able to delete a piece of audio. Like I'm going to delete this clip right now. And when I do the clip to the right stays where it is. And so you see that I deleted that little audio clip. The clip to the right didn't move. And that's a feature that was added in version 3.1. Now I'm going to hit command Z. Again, I'm on a Mac, so it's command Z, not control Z. And I undid that just to put that little piece of audio back in there. Now the same holds true if there's a piece of audio within the clip itself that I want to get rid of. Let's say I didn't want that audio there that I've got highlighted. Now before you delete audio, before I delete audio, I always press the Z key on my keyboard. The Z key moves that selection to zero crossing, meaning that there's less chance for popping in the playback because it's right at the quiet point, the zero point, it moves those endpoints to the zero point in my audio because I, you know, I can't do that manually. So I always press Z before I delete a piece of audio. And if you're not doing that, you should maybe think about that as well because it does save you from time to time. So I've got that piece of audio selected. I'm ready to delete it. Let's go ahead and delete it. And you'll see that when I do, again, that piece of audio to the right didn't move. It's stationary. Now, what looks like a break right here in the audio isn't really. It's just where my cursor is. So if I move my playhead or my cursor over a little bit, you know, that line moves. It didn't break that little audio clip into two pieces. That was just where my playhead was. Now I'm going to hit Command Z to undo this one. And let me show you where you can change this. If you want to go back to the way Audacity was, where you want to delete or you want to, uh, when you delete a, a piece of audio, you want the rest of the audio to slide over into that time slot. 
you can turn that back on. So let's go up here to uh, Audacity drop-down menu, and let's go into Preferences. And once we're in Preferences, if you select Tracks Behavior from the left side, and simply enable here where it says Editing a, editing a Clip can move other clips. So if I select that, and I tell it OK, and then I come back in, I have a sl uh, piece of audio selected that I want to delete. If I delete that, it's going to move that piece of audio to the right over that amount, just like that. So I'm going to hit Command Z, and it's the same thing if I select an entire audio clip. So in this case, I've got the entire audio clip selected, and I hit Delete. It moves the audio to the right, every bit of audio to the right. In this instance, I've only got one little clip. But it moves the audio to the right over that amount that I just deleted. So that's one way to you know, put that back to pre-3.1 days if that's what you want to do. Now I'm going to hit Command-Z to undo that, and I'm going to go back up into my Preferences window, and I'm going to uncheck that and put it back to the default value. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is to insert a label track. And in order to do that, let's come up here to the Tracks drop-down window, Add New, and we're going to add a new label track. And I'm going to take this label track and I'm going to move it up just under that top track. And what that does, again, it separates that top track from the tracks below it when I turn, when I turn on Sync Lock Tracks, which is what I'm going to do now. So if we come up to the Tracks drop-down menu and we turn on Sync Lock Tracks, not a whole lot happens. But you can see that the tracks, in the tracks that I have selected, specifically the label track and the one right above it, that little clock appeared. And that's telling me that Sync Lock Tracks is on and that those two tracks are synced together. The label track isn't really synced with that one. Well, it kind of is, but it's more of a separator at this point in the way that I'm going to use it. Another way that I can tell is if I select through a, a piece of the track, you can see that it puts the little clocks in there. If I had more than one track in that group of tracks, those clocks would appear in every track that I have grouped together. But in this case, I've only got the one track, so it, this is what it does. Now with Sync Lock Tracks on, there's a little bit of a difference here. If you use Sync Lock Tracks, you need to be aware of this because the default way that Audacity has said it's going to work changes a little bit when you've got Sync Lock Tracks on. So let's select this piece of audio here in our middle track and let's delete it. And you'll notice that when I deleted it, the audio to the right moved over that amount, the same amount as the selected uh, piece that I deleted. That's because Sync Lock Tracks is on. If we go back up to the Audacity Preferences window and double check ourselves, we can see that I still have that unchecked, which is default, which should allow that other track or that other audio clip to stay where it was. But when you've got Sync Lock Tracks on, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. So I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that. And if you're not familiar with Sync Lock Tracks, Sync Lock Tracks, only really come into play when you've got two pieces of audio in a group that overlap each other. In this instance, I can move this piece of audio all over the place and it doesn't care. Same here, I can come back into this short piece. I can move it around. They're not, they're synced together, but not really, not in terms of one being stacked on top of the other. If I move this track down here into this, or this audio clip down here into this lower track, same thing, I can move it all around. These two tracks aren't actually synced together until there's a piece of audio that overlaps them. So as soon as I drug, drug, is that a word? As soon as I dragged this one in the bottom over where it overlapped the one right above it, now they're synced together. So if I grab one or the other, it doesn't matter which one, and I move it, it moves both of them because they're synced together. But here's another little gotcha when you've got sync lock tracks on in this new version 3.1 of Audacity. Let's, uh, just so I can show this to you, I'm going to select this middle track here, and you can see Sync Lock Tracks is on, and you can see that there's kind of an imaginary line right here where the clocks are that sort of cuts off a little bit of that waveform there in that lower track. If I delete this now, what it's going to do, what it's going to do in addition to deleting that piece of audio, it's going to move the other track over, and it's going to cut it off right where that imaginary line is. So let me do that. So you can see it moved it over and a little bit of that waveform has been chopped off because that's where my overlap was on sync lock tracks. So I'm gonna command Z to undo that. 
and then I'm going to Command Z again, and I'm going to Command Z again there. Now I can move this track around a little bit more. Let's do it in such a way that it's a little bit more obvious. Let's get it back over here, say right in here somewhere. And now we're sync locked together. Life is good. We're moving things around. And let's come back up to this track again and let's delete it. Again, I moved it over, but it's a little bit more obvious. It really cut into that waveform. Now that waveform isn't trimmed. You know, that new trim feature in 3.1 is fantastic. That's a real good step toward non-destructive editing. But when you select this bottom piece of track here, you can see that it isn't trimmed. I can trim it shorter, but I can't open it back up. In other words, that, that audio that it cut off when I deleted it, with, when I deleted the other clip above it with sync lock tracks activated, it is gone. That audio is gone. I can't get it back as short of doing, you know, Command Z or Control Z to undo it over and over again. But if you save your project like that, you can't come back and undo it at that point. But right now I can. So there's a Command Z. There's a Command Z. And there's a Command Z. So I wanted to just show that to you. That's what I've discovered so far with Audacity version 3.1. And again, version 3.1.1 is out. And there are some minor fixes that were enumerated in that release. You can go look on the uh, Audacity team website and see what those fixes are. But for this video, I just wanted to let you know, if you use sync lock tracks, the behavior changes a little bit from what it is when sync lock tracks is not activated. So be aware of that because that can sneak up on you and kind of get you all of a sudden and you're like, whoa, what happened? So that's it. I hope you all have a good rest of the day or night, whatever time you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next video.